Well, hello and welcome again to Word for the Week, our online book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. Pastor Jeremy Hyken here with you, and I'm uh, very excited to be with you as we look at uh, another chapter of J. Paylightner's book, uh, The Prayer of Agar. We're looking at chapter 7 this week, um, which uh, is talking about the possible repercussions of living in the extremes. And so the point of Agar's prayer thus far really has been that God would place him in what Paylightner calls the sweet spot, the, the spot where he has all that he needs uh, and really nothing more than what he needs, but he has all of his needs provided for. When we get to chapter 7 here, we're talking about the idea of the extremes. And so I want you to stop and think about this for just a moment. When we talk about extremes, right, there are two sort of ends of the spectrum, if you will, when it comes to extremes. There's the end of the spectrum that uh, would be too little, right? Um, and the furthest reach of the too little extreme would be what we're going to call extreme poverty, uh, maybe homelessness. Um, those kinds of things would factor into that. The other end of the extremes would be rather obviously too much. And so uh, at that, at that uh, sort of extreme, we, we find things like maybe greed, selfishness, uh, materialism, um, that, that sort of play out in these two furthest extremes. So what Paylightner is suggesting here is that when we find ourselves preferring to dwell in extremes, uh, obviously preferring to dwell usually in the too much, right, category, uh, it becomes a tremendous weakness for us. Um, at the very opening of this, uh, this chapter, he asks the question, do you know your weaknesses? Have you considered when and where you are most vulnerable to temptation? Um, because the reality is we're usually, those who are tempted uh, when it comes to, to stuff, and money and all that kind of thing, we're usually tempted to the to do too, too much, right? I mean, it's not too often we're tempted to do little, um, but we can be very tempted to want more than what we need. So um, Agar, as he's praying, he very clearly sort of has a problem with this, or at least he 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 seems to suggest that he's had some sort of history with. Uh, either the, the too much or the not having enough or something. He has some kind of an attachment to this idea of the extremes. Um, here's the biggest problem with the extremes. If we get into that extreme of having too much, then uh, Jay Paylander rightly says we, we might start to ask questions of ourselves. And one of those questions might lead us to this phrase, like maybe I don't need God. I have everything I could possibly need, and I, by the way, I provided that for myself, so maybe I don't need God after all. Um, Agar, it seems, realizes that there's a problem with both ends of the spectrum of the extremes, and there's sin at either end. If I have too little, the potential for sin exists because I might do things that I shouldn't do in order to get the things that I think I need or want that I don't have. And so I could be forced to steal or I could be forced to cheat or lie or something. On the other end of the spectrum with the uh, extremes where I have too much, I have a potential for sin there too because that's where greed, selfishness, um, those kinds of things come into play. Well, I like the question that Paylightner asks. He says, can you pray for just enough, just the right amount? And that's a really difficult thing to do, praying for just the right amount. Now, we've talked about this kind of just in terms of financial things, but I love how Paylightner also talks about this in several other ways. And he, he uses this idea of, of Agar's prayer, where he's sort of praying for not too much, not too little, but just the right amount. And Paylightner applies it to a lot of different scenarios in our life. For example, he says, can you imagine yourself praying the following? This is the bottom of page 42. Can you imagine yourself praying the following? Give me neither furious rage nor vapid cowardice, but give me a consistent sense of composure. Otherwise, I might wimp out and allow injustices to prevail and say, where is the Lord? Or I might lose my cool and so dishonor the name of my God. 
so here's an issue of extremes where I'm either not having a strong enough uh, spine about things or I'm being too sort of um, um, uh, too too rude. I'm being, I become rude. I become offensive. I become uh, um, mean spirited as a result of, of sort of feeling too much uh, uh, pride for my strength and who I am. Payleitner also talks about it in terms of like jealousy. Um, he says that he would neither have uh, jealousy nor tiresome self. Uh, deprecation, but give me self-respect and appreciation for the good fortune of others. And there's several other instances. What I would love uh, to see, um, to, to hear about you guys doing is, is apply this through your own life. Like where are the places in my life where I tend toward extremes? Um, and when I think about my life, you know, one place that I tend toward extremes is, um, is busyness actually, um, is, uh, is, is doing, um, things, taking on projects, saying yes when I should be saying no, not protecting my family time. And so for me, it might sound something like, you know, um, give me uh, neither too much work to do nor too little to do because on either end of the spectrum, I can have a problem. I can uh, find sin when I am too busy, too involved, too too much saying yes because then I've, I've I've sinned against my family, my wife. I'm not there when I need to be. Those kinds of things. But on the other side of the spectrum, there's sin when I don't have enough because then you know I get bored and uh, who you know um, I get lazy or whatever the situation might be. And so you can apply these things to your life. And what I really really liked is on page 44, um, Payleitner gives us sort of a step by step how we could how we could draft one of these prayers for ourselves. He says, step one, make sure you don't allow whatever the trait is to devolve into self-destruction or an extreme of too much or too little. So what is the thing you're, you're sort of thinking about as a problem for you? Now, the prayer is, I don't want it to, to, to sort of evolve into too much or too little. I need just enough of that thing, just the right amount of that thing. Um, step two says, see the facet of your life as a gift. So when it comes to work for me, work is a gift. But if I over, if I overdo it, if I, if I get too far down that road, then I've, I've sort of misused that gift. I've not treated it well. I've not been a good steward of it. The third step is to empower friends or family members to nudge you. So, uh, pay, or um, uh, Agar in his prayer, right? He says, "Give me neither uh, too little nor enough, because if I have one or the other, I'm prone to sin." So it's sort of like he's saying, "God, remind me." That if I have more than what I really truly need, I'm 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 prone to sin, or if I have less than uh, than is than is helpful, you know, I'm prone to sin. And so remind me that I, I'm looking for that sweet spot with you. Um, four says, notice others who have the same character trait. Certainly, whatever your thing is that you struggle with, whatever the the character trait is, the attribute, the whatever. Um, uh, there are other people who struggle with this too, and, and you probably noticed that. You know, link yourself with them that you might be able to help one another. Um, so the idea here is about the extremes um, and finding yourself in God's sweet spot. This is difficult. It's not just a once and done kind of situation. As a matter of fact, you know, I think about the life of King David, right? He, I think, struggled with this because he found so many instances in his life where if he had too much of a good thing, it was too much. It, it got him into trouble. Um, and, and there's other instances in Scripture the same way. Maybe the prodigal son is an example of that. He, he's given his full share and he goes out and maybe that was too much for him, right? Um, so what is it for you that if you have too much of that thing or too many opportunities, it can lead you into a bad place. Recognize that thing. Um, ask God to put you in the sweet spot where he needs you to be with just the right amount of whatever it is. Uh, and that, I think, can be very, very helpful for us. Um, as we sort of draw this uh, prayer of Agar to a close, uh, next week we're going to be taking a look at um, the idea of the, the, the sweet spot, living actually in the sweet spot. And since we're talking about neither too little nor too much, but the sweet spot, I want to just sort of prep you for next week by saying this. Um, Agar writes, two things I ask of you, Lord. 
Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Otherwise I may have too much and disown you, or I may become poor and steal, and so disdain, dis, dis, dishonor the name of my God. What is the sweet spot there for him? The sweet spot is that just right enough uh, amount. What is the sweet spot for you? Well, it might not be the middle, right? 50% or however you want to look at the middle. You know, for you, the, the, the sweet spot that God wants you in might be at the 65% mark or maybe the 35% mark. Maybe there's some things in your life where God's kind of pushing you and he wants you to, to sort of function with 25% of something instead of 100. Or maybe there are places where he goes, you know, I know you need a little extra of this. And so he wants you to function at 150%. He's going to provide that for you. Um, the idea of the extremes is you can't just say out of 100, 50 is the middle. That's the sweet spot. It's where the Lord sort of places you and lands you, which leads us back to what we talked about last week and the week before with contentment, right? The sweet spot is finding contentment. Uh, being resolved to be settled in what the Lord gives to us. And I hope that's what you can focus on this week. Just being resolved that you're going to be settled with whatever the Lord has given you. That, and, and trust that he is giving you all that you need. It may not seem like enough right now, but he has the ability to make it enough. He adds the blessing to it. And so uh, I hope that you'll just strive for whatever the sweet spot is the Lord gives to you in every different instance of your life. Hope you guys have a great week. We will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.